Mm, good times. Looking forward to trying this one out because <coughs> I've I've never had a, a double rye. I don't. I really. I don't know what to expect. <clears throat> at forty five. What's that? Forty six. Forty six. Forty six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was looking through the. Well, there's, I was trying to read the back your, of it. There's your double rye right there. It's a. Uh, 80% rye and 20% malted rye, aged between two and nine years. And it says here the two year old is a beautiful high rye that tastes of cinnamon, clove, anise, eucalyptus buttons, and evergreen gin like flavors. The older rye adds just enough caramel sweetness and woody vanilla richness to calm the bite of the younger rye. The resulting combination is bold, balanced, complex, and perfect for mixing. Mixing a Manhattan? Maybe. I don't know. Or just... It does go on here to talk about cocktails. The resulting combination is bold, balanced, complex, and perfect for mixing. We recommend trying the Double Rye Manhattan or Old Fashioned. It's also absolutely superb for sipping alone or sharing with other cowboys and good-looking strangers. <laughs> There's some whack shit on the back <laughs> label of this bottle. Maybe we'll get into that here pretty soon. Are you uh, ready to roll? Why did I even ask? You're already rolling. <laughs> oh, shit. Welcome to the Saber the Burn Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan. Uh, across the table from me, this laughing... <laughs> asshole w2 <laughs> uh uh how's everybody doing hi uh, on this episode we are going to try the high west double rye whiskey and i've been looking forward to this one for a while yeah this is uh yeah me too i have not had the uh the double rye uh as well but i've had some of their other ones and they make a great whiskey yeah you have their their bourbon mm -hmm, up in your mm -hmm. up in your cabinet i've got their uh yeah their prairie bourbon uh, there's also another one called Campfire. I've had that one as well. Uh, Does the name yeah. reflect the taste? Uh, it's another bourbon, but yeah, it's 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 got a little bit more of a smoky. It does have uh, a flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. huh? And their price points, uh, you, you can't you can't touch it. I mean, it's yeah. This one says uh, it retails for about thirty five bucks. Hmm. Well, it's not just a rye; it's a double rye, and we'll get into what differentiates a rye from a double rye uh here in a little bit it's uh out of the great state of utah not only known for mormons and <laughs> he's he's you just you just put the, the 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 open bottle to the microphone like the listener's gonna smell it you just like here check this out <laughs> smell this <laughs> smell it can you smell that through your earbuds <laughs> through your car fucking speakers good times <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the great state of Utah, not only known for for uh, multiple wives and Mormons, it's uh, <laughs> it's also got one hell of a uh, a whiskey producer out there, High West Distillery. I was reading on the uh, the back of the bottle here. I'll tip this back over here and read it again. Where was it here? Uh, High West is Utah's first distillery since 1870, and the world's only. Nice. Ski in gastro distillery. If you find yourself in Old Town Park City, please stop or ski by to visit us. And it goes on to talk about uh, some of the, the cool little things that make their distillery unique apart from the other ones. I'm going to pour some in my sniffer. <laughs> Don't forget to uh, <laughs> let your microphone let smell it. Microphone <laughs> smell it. Check it out, microphone. What do you think of that? You fucking microphone. Oh, goodness. Is that about the same amount you got? That'll work. Yep. I'm good with that. It's got a pretty color to it. It's kind of a light amber mm -hmm. or maybe medium amber. I think the uh, the bourbon you shared or you showed me earlier was about a, a light amber. This is this is a medium amber. The smell on the nose, I, I really expected this to be more, more rye more forward. More rye forward, yep. Yeah. And at two years old, the smell... It smells less hot than uh, some of the other. Definitely. Some of the other single years. I'm picking up a little bit of uh, that aromatic kind of um, spice. What is it? Uh, not 
not medicinal. There was another word that we were that we were throwing around in a previous episode. Brainy. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd throw medicinal on that because uh, when you open the back of your mouth and let it roll over the tongue, it, it's got some medicinal on it. I'm picking up some clove. Some clove, some caramel, maybe a little bit of vanilla. Once again, I'm still not finding any of the in any of the apple that that I that I taste in a lot of um, or I smell anyway in a lot of um, a lot of whiskeys. Maybe just when it comes to rye whiskeys, they they delete the apple. What does it say here on the on the nose? What what does the website tell us we're supposed to smell here? Looks like uh, notes of mint, clove, cinnamon, licorice root. Huh. And builds up with aromas of pine nuts, dark chocolate, and even gin botanicals. Oh, see, gin's a big, uh, it's not even a gray area for me. It's just completely black. I'm like little to not exposed to to gin. I think I've had a cocktail that had gin in it. Actually, I know I did. It was over uh, Thanksgiving. That's a fun little story. I, I went to Thanksgiving over at my sister's house. A fellow vegetarian. I'm not a vegetarian, dear listener. But, she here in town? Uh, yeah, yeah. She lives down by the plaza, the plaza, as some <laughs> call it. Anywho, I I uh, I cooked up some uh, sweet potatoes and uh, something else. I forgot what. And I brought them over. And uh, there in the in the apartment with us was a real live paleontologist. And I'm still jazzed about meeting this dude. I had. You know, I've probably fired off 35 questions in 10 minutes, and he just, he was very patient with me. He was very <laughs> understanding, and he uh, he had uh, uh, all of the uh, all of the information you could really kind of ever want. His, um, he specifically studies in, I don't know if they call it practices, what is it, uh, sub-Cretaceous uh, period. So that's like right before the uh, theorized um, uh, asteroid hit and wiped everything out. So, you know, he was, uh, we had, we had a great conversation and it was everything like, um, uh, to draw on, uh, Christianity here real quick, uh, the, uh, the, the road to Damascus where they were, they're on the, they were all defeated. Christ was executed in front of God and everybody They're you know, everybody's out to get them. They just need to get out of town and decompress and relax. And like uh, on the way there. This stranger walks up and starts talking about all these different points and the and the old scriptures, but like, but he connected these dots, didn't he? And the the thing about that that I'm trying, the point that I'm getting to, is when they were when they had come back and they were talking about it, they said how our hearts burned within us when he was talking to us, and that it, in a in a way that's how it was with paleontology. For when paleontology was like probably the first thing that i really wanted to be when i was a kid i wanted to be a paleontologist i wanted to dig up dinosaur bones and (laughs) and uh and and that kind of stuff it was all very romantic and glamorous in my little kid brain but um actually getting to sit down with a real live paleontologist was uh it was an experience unto its own that i uh i still think back on and he was he was very cool very knowledgeable very patient is everything i i uh Everything I think I needed. And they say, don't meet your heroes. He didn't know he was a hero until I was like, you know, maybe 20 questions in. But <laughs> it was great. I'm really glad I got to meet him. That's and cool. speaking of heroes, you find a lot of heroes in the West, in the in the old spaghetti <laughs> westerns. And I'm not, I don't know if we're going to find a hero here in this double, in this double, double rye whiskey from High West Whiskey. But as far as the smell goes, it smells like it's going to be a little bit more mellow than what I thought. So I'm I'm gonna give this uh, the mouth and we'll we'll see how it tastes. Wayne, what do you think? Oh, you can taste that rye. I can taste the rye. The rye, it, I, the rye is not all there on the nose, but it is all over the palate. I'm actually very surprised to taste both rye. Like mm-hmm. it's, uh, uh, we haven't gotten into it yet, but it's uh, it's blended uh, from one rye. From a, a, a straight rye and a malted rye, um, they they blend those together, and uh, I didn't expect to be able to taste the difference and taste them both individually on the same taste. Wow, I'm not yeah. exactly wowed by this. <clears throat> uh, my first impression, I'm not exactly wowed by this double rye, uh, except for when it it comes back on the finish. It's got something mentholy. It had mm-hmm. more. It had more burn to it, uh, more heat to it than I thought it would, but it wasn't. 
lingering. It didn't make its way all the way down to the stomach. Didn't burn the entire throat on the way down. So I picked up on the the menthol and the minty okay. uh, as well, and I just glanced down at the notes, and the notes say, and a deluge of menthol, mint, eucalyptus, herbal tea, and allspice. Maybe that eucalyptus is, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. But yeah, menthol, herbal tea. Yeah, I'll wait until my, my kind of second pull on this taster here for the herbal tea and allspice. I, I It does... All right. The allspice in re- retrospect, I thought maybe the anise or is it anise? I'm not sure. The, the star mm-hmm. spice. I think it's star anise, anise, but I might be wrong. I, I don't know. Uh, quote me and put me on blast, dear listener. But um, <laughs> it doesn't... It's not like on the on the on the nose. It's not there, but on the on the tongue, it's there. The spice, and I'm guessing that's what it is. It, it's all spice. There's a there's a good heat to this, but I don't yeah. feel I don't feel like it has as much heat as some of the other ones that we've tried. At 92 proof, it's expected, right? But I think this has definitely the a longer finish. It definitely does. Yeah, it stays with you. What does it say in the finish notes here? Longer. <laughs> you just said this. Longer finish. All right. But uh, with notes of cinnamon, I'm not catching that. Mint, maybe. And, and anise. anise. Okay. There's. Man. I don't know if I accidentally read that before or, or not, but I can I can taste that. Maybe not so much the mint, but the it tastes more eucalyptus to me. Eucalyptus-y. Yeah. That's a word now. Put that in your dictionary, Webster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I like. I like being able to taste uh, the the two different rye in this. I think it's appropriately billed as a double rye, and especially <clears throat> after my my second taste on that. Uh, do you uh, have any any uh, extra info on this that that I haven't already disclosed? Yeah, I'm just kind of reading in here. Park City, Utah. The High West Distillery is a manufacturer of and blender of spirits. Uh, founded in 2007 by David Perkins, this petite distiller makes its offerings in small batches and is the first legally licensed distillery in Utah since the end of Prohibition. Oh, since the end of Prohibition. Huh. Didn't say that on the back of the bottle. There's so many distillers out there and, and you know, reading and hearing... That you know, a, a distillery like like High West. I mean, they they make great whiskeys. You, you see them everywhere, um, but their offerings are all geared around the small batch hmm. uh, type model, which I I I find myself gravitating towards because I, I I find it a little bit more interesting. It's it's definitely interesting, especially now that that uh, it's I've given it time for the finish to actually finish. In the in the flavor and the mouth notes, it says herbal tea, but I'm not finding that anywhere until the very end of mm-hmm. the finish. Like as it's leaving everything else behind, it's giving us that that herbal tea kind of flavor to it. And some people actually infuse their whiskey with with herbal tea. We've seen it. That's what I hear. I'm I'm a little hesitant to try it because I w- I wouldn't know what to start with. Maybe an old standard like Jim Beam or or whatever, but. A double rye? Why not? Yeah. I, I would definitely dip a tea bag in it and see what's what. What I'm finding interesting with the finish on this, you know, so many so many whiskeys, whether it's a, a short finish or a long finish, there are a lot of whiskeys out there that even even when that finish is done, I feel like there's still a burn that just kind of continues on, whether you need to chase it with a drink of water or whatever. This one, once the finish was done... It was done. It's done. There's no burn. There's no nothing. It just kind of dissolves itself. That's pretty unique. I don't, or at least for me, anyway. I'm trying to think of. Uh, it's it's hard for me to think anything on the fly off off top of my head of another whiskey or rye whiskey. Since we're talking about rye whiskeys, that um, uh, that once the burn is gone, it's gone. It's done. Like mm-hmm. it's not. There's no ghost of the memory that that hangs around and still tries to like you know haunt you. This one's just. It's there. And then it's gone. It's just like gone, like yeah. you said. What? Where would you put it on a one to ten, and mm. and why? Not not comparing it to other whiskeys, yeah. But just uh, 
to compare it to itself, judging it for its character. I think I'm going to give it a good solid seven. And why is that? Just as it's got a, a well-rounded, good flavor. You know, the nose is not overpowering. You know, we talked about the ride does not hit you at all on the, on the nose, but as soon as you taste it, it is immediately there. That mint and eucalyptus, uh, I think that menthol, Mm-hmm kind of gives it within the burn to me it also kind of is a little cooling mm-hmm. at the yeah. same time and uh and then yeah it has a great long finish so you can really kind of savor and unpack all those different flavors but then when it reaches the end it's done and you can move on mm-hmm. yeah i think i'm right there with you a, a solid seven out of ten and, and for most if not all the reasons you gave but uh to kind of expand on what you were talking about there on the back end it's not just that uh that it's done and gone it does leave you with a, a little something extra that i don't think i've found in in any other any other whiskey that we've tried it's the i'm still stuck on that herbal tea because mm-hmm. i drink a lot of herbal tea for you know different times of the year uh, different different kinds of herbal tea. That's one of the things I like about it is the taste will stick with you. This thing, it's like you you've just been visited by a you know an herbal tea witch, and <laughs> she's like <laughs> she's got her spell on you, and you're just you're just you're happy that you did that. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's not just um, and to uh, to back you up on on your point of not being able to smell the rye on the on the nose, but when you taste it, it's there. It's not just there; it hits you twice from two different. It's yeah. like a jab yeah. and a right hook of a, a rye and a malted rye. And we can go ahead and read into that here uh, in your notes that you found. It says uh, double rye is an award winning blend of two straight rye whiskeys aged between two and nine years. Uh, <laughs> says they're also hush hush about the ratio, uh, but we do know the older is 95% rye, 5% barley uh, malt from the MGP, uh, and the other is 80 rye and 20 malted rye from the High West Distillery. Why the exclamation point you find on the uh, on the on the label of the High West whiskey double rye? Well, that's because this beauty's aim is to be the spiciest rye whiskey on earth. The marriage of the two wildly different juices offers a bold and complex character that's great in an old fashioned or shared neat with a wrangler. With a wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> on the back of the bottle, though, it says something a little bit different here. Talks about the cowboys. It says, uh, we recommend trying the Double Rye Manhattan or Old Fashioned. Uh, it's also absolutely superb for sipping alone or sharing with cowboys and good-looking strangers. <laughs> I like a good-looking stranger from time to time, but they can stay strangers. I have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, every taste is the same. It's very consistent. You don't, you don't smell the rye. And then you taste it, and you get hit with both ryes. I think the malted rye comes in second. Uh, not second in, in flavor uh, rating or anything, but second. Uh, the, the second hit of rye is, uh, is the malted rye. And I really do think this is great. And like you said, the, the coolness comes in to uh to kind of usher the heat out and uh you're just there's the there's the finish you can you can taste and feel the herbal kind of the herbal tea kind of finish and that's de- that's definitely the the menthol mm-hmm. aspect of it i think yeah um i'm interested to what does it say an old-fashioned or a manhattan i don't see why we shouldn't try this in a in a manhattan or an old-fashioned i think we should I think we absolutely should. I think let's. Uh, we've done the old fashioned before in a couple of our variants. Let's let's go the Manhattan route. Let's go Manhattan. I like it. All right, let's take a quick Sounds pause good. and uh, get some mixing going. Do ticky ticky do ticky ticky do do. Coaster stuck to my, my my glass. What kind of glass did you call this? These are just martini glasses. Mm. I wish I had a set of coupe glasses. Coupe glasses, and you Koopa? said that C O U P E coupe. Probably just coupe. And you said that was the kind that Stanley Tucci used in his uh, whiskey sour. Yep. Huh. Yeah, it it looked like a wine glass, just uh, shallow. Yeah. Or a very very small margarita glass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, margaritas can turn into a great big fish bowl. <laughs> If you ever go to El Maguey's in, in Raytown, you can get one. I don't know what they call them, but they look like a damn fish bowl, and it's a yep. giant margarita. And it's 
We like we like going to the uh, salty iguana in Prairie Village. Okay. And uh, I forget what day of the week it is, but one of the days is their margarita night, and it's it's the heavy glass with the blue glass top on the rim. Uh huh. But the thing is, it is a full on fish bowl. Huh. And yeah, several years ago, before Henry was born, we went up there, and I've got a couple pictures of Katie and I sitting next to each other. The bowls combined are bigger than her and I, both of our heads combined. <laughs> and we we're all just sucking on the straws. Yep. I, I like I like Mexican restaurants. I like their food. Mm-hmm. The uh, Salty Iguana, we particularly like their uh, their taco night. They do a um, fried blue corn tortilla okay. for their tacos. Do they make their own? Yes, they do. Huh. Anytime I've been to the Salty Iguana, it's been kind of a letdown. Fuck. You're rolling, aren't you? Of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back from our short little break. We are enjoying a Manhattan. That, a high uh, west Manhattan. A high west Manhattan that W2 masterfully produced over here on the uh, on the mixing station. Yeah, I really quick did a look up because it didn't even occur to me, which I don't know why it didn't, because I knew that High West has a lot of published recipes out on their website. Mm. And uh, But as we were kind of reading through this, it talked about a High West Manhattan. And so I went out there to compare it to the recipe that I had. And sure enough, their recipe, same recipe as a classic Manhattan, just three-quarter ounce sweet vermouth versus a full ounce a sweet vermouth so a little less sweet vermouth which i think is a good call because yeah it helps this this whiskey shine sweet vermouth is a very very sweet addition to to any drink mm. and we're dealing with a rye whiskey here mm-hmm. but on their recommendation of just the three quarters i think was a good call not to overly sweet it and like you said let the rye shine a little bit right I think it drops back on the complexity of, of tasting both ryes, but I do think it helps the malted rye <clears throat> develop more in this cocktail yeah. here. Definitely shines better. You know, and the recipe I had suggested a brandied cherry or, if you prefer, a lemon twist. All right. Well, I thought, well, why not both? Right. But again, I've got the barrel-aged cher- cherries, not the candy cherries. So right. we use the barrel-aged cherries. And- yeah, barrel-aged cherries. Dear listener, if you have the opportunity opportunity to try the uh, Woodford Reserve barrel aged cherries versus the uh, you know your your run of the mill maraschino cherries it's night and day difference yep these barrel aged cherries are beyond delicious and i'm just letting mine sit in the bottom of my manhattan just kind of soaking in and yeah, marrying and, out and, you know the recipe said to garnish with the cherry or the lemon twist i did both because one i wanted the cherry but i thought just the lemon twist would add a little bit additional element Mm -hmm. to the flavor of that you know there is no lemon juice in this Mm -hmm. but the little twist of the lemon and then the rind kind of bobbing in the drink Mm -hmm. while you drink it is going to give you a little bit of lemon zest lemon oils within it so yeah another dimension it adds yeah another dimension of complexity and deliciousness and manhattans are definitely not my go-to but this is very tasty it is tasty Uh, i'm enjoying this a lot My sister is always, she's always trying to get me to try new cocktails and and things. And she's very much into bourbons and whiskeys. But gin is also, is her thing. She loves gins. And so she's always been trying to get me to try a Negroni for forever. And I finally went out and and I know almost nothing about gins. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple gins here and there. It's just not my thing. More so just because I don't know a lot about them. And yeah, when, same here. when I went to the store, clearly I didn't know what I was buying because I bought a botanical gin. Oh. And that's not what you should use in a Negroni. Oh. Um, it's it over floral <laughs> uh, eyes is the, the cocktail. And uh, But anyway... So, yeah, she's trying to get me to, to try a lot of different things. Recently, she she told me I should try a Boulevardia, okay. which I have not tried yet, but Boulevardia is basically a Negroni, but only with bourbon instead of the huh. gin. Okay. So I have all the ingredients for that, so by association, that's probably going to be on our list at some point. Yeah, let's do it. I've got the uh, sweet vermouth. I've got a bottle of uh, Campari up in the fridge. And you have any idea what which what kind of bourbon would, would work with the I might ask her. I might ask her... Uh, what bourbon she has tried and and thinks work well with that but Mm -hmm. 
My <laughs> my mother in law sent me a link this morning. Actually, she was uh, going through her emails and she's subscribed to I think it's Better House. Yeah, like Better that. Homes and Gardens. Yeah. One of the articles that she came across was 20 whiskey brands that won't break the bank. Huh. And so I clicked on a nice little read. Very excited to, to learn that more than a handful of the ones on the list I have in the cabinet. Oh, cool. Yeah. But they also, as they listed them out, they listed them out by specific categories. I think the Elijah Craig, for example, was the one that they rated as the best bourbon for cocktails. And the Red Breast 12-year was on there for the best Irish whiskey. Yeah, that red that Red Breast 12 year is uh, it's worthy of anybody's list. Yeah, I've and So is that Highland. Now that I know that there is a I, I'm really kind of curious, you know, we talked about the 12 year versus 15 year and on and on and on and and you know, just for the money, the 12 year seems to be that sweet spot for anything. Right. But there is also the cask strength version of the 12 year that's just about 10 bucks more. Uh-huh. than the, the regular 12-year red breasts. And so I'm very interested in trying to get a hold of maybe that. It might be a, a good step up from just the regular 12-year. It'd definitely be worth the experience. I mean, if, if you've got... Ooh, I just got a little bit of that lemon zest yeah. on that taste. And yeah, at the, the very bottom of this Manhattan, that's where the lemon's yeah. been sitting. It's Man. been waiting on you to get that pull. That that actually is really fantastic with just a <laughs> just a hint of lemon with that. Mm-hmm. This High West Double Rye has been uh, it's been surprising, like in every every twist and turn. And the price point, the price point, yeah, yeah. I, the noise you hear is me looking at the High V receipt where I found it on the shelf. It was thirty two ninety nine after tax. It was thirty five eighty nine, and that's exactly what it was online. So yeah, you know the flavor dot com. A lot of their spirits are well priced. Some of them are very comparable to what you get locally. Mm-hmm. Some of them are. A lot of them end up are are a lot cheaper than what you can get them locally. Plus, with the subscription service through Flavier, you get a do you get a free shipping off? You get free shipping. It's free shipping. Yeah. Okay. But this one was thirty four ninety nine. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's right out so, where it was with uh, with tax. And you know, I mean, I would think it it might even be worth it just just to order it from the website and have it delivered. Yeah. You don't have to go out in the public and deal with public <laughs> the people out there. But it's it's nice to know that this is one you can find most places most places carry high west yeah and it, what surprised me is it was behind the counter like hmm. behind the cashiers the yeah the, the cashiers i was i gave up looking for it in the whiskey bourbon aisle and uh you could steal the 45 dollar bottle but the 35 dollar bottle right you had uh ask for that that under is lock and key pretty much what happened but yeah well it wasn't under lock and key but it, it was up, <laughs> up up behind him and i'm like well that's exactly what i'm looking for right there because i wanted to see if they had any more of that uh not that i'm looking to buy it i was just curious if they still had any of that johnny walker blue label mm. up there and i didn't see any behind the the counter but i didn't really look too hard because once i saw the high west i kind of zeroed in on that and i took the the other bottle back and stuck it where I found it. I, the more expensive bottle I right. might add. I took it back to where I found it and uh, grabbed the. Ask him to hand me the High West. You know anybody that walks up to the register empty-handed, but they're waiting in line, just like every other dick. You know, waiting <laughs> to buy their shit. They they look suspicious, and you know I I generally look suspicious anyway. But they uh, I'm like, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, give me that. I need that bottle of the High West back here, the double rye. And put I'm it in okay. a brown paper bag, please. Yes. Put it in a brown paper and then put it in that, 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 that plastic bag. Thank you. So, dear listener, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and thems, if you're looking for a very unique rye whiskey, look no further than the High West double rye whiskey straight out of the great state of Utah. It's uh, aged two years. It's uh, 92 proof, but it really doesn't hit you hard like you would expect a 92 proof to hit you. It's got a very, very complex uh, bouquet of, of flavors on the on the on the mouth, but not so much on the on the nose. From what I thought, now we both still locked in at a solid seven, uh, maybe even a seven and a half, looking back on it as far as uh, rye whiskeys go. Mostly for me, because of the, the double complexity of the ryes, uh, how you how the first 
on the mouth it's uh your your regular rye taste but after that the malted rye comes in second and hits you with a right hook and it lands it lands pretty hard but then it's gone and then you're left with this kind of herbal tea kind of finish yeah. on the on the on the on the far end and that heat once it's gone like you said once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, I talked about you know that once the finish is done, it's it's gone. But you're right, it's not gone. Gone. There, you're left with that herbal tea. It's the calm after the storm kind of a, a yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a very nice calm. Mm-hmm. You know, so many different drinks when you finish, and when that finish is kind of played out, you're ready to run to the bathroom and brush your teeth and right, brush your tongue. You, like and, the aftertaste is some kind of bitter or sour. Right, and it's just like yeah, funk. Like, this is not no like that at all. No, it's not. It's very, very pleasant. Yeah. yeah. Once the heat's done, it's gone. Once the overall flavor is done, that finish, it's gone. But you're just left with this. Oh. <laughs> this this aura of delicious. <laughs> but uh, even with that, uh, that's just by itself. And added into a cocktail such as this uh, Manhattan that we tried tonight, it paired very well. It it made mm-hmm. a great <laughs> it made a great drink. I really, I have zero complaints. I, I'm very thankful that I pulled back a little bit on the sweet vermouth on that. And uh, yeah, really good cocktail. Really good very, cocktail. Very excited about that. And if you like what we've been talking about tonight, as far as the High West Double Rye Whiskey goes, feel free to follow along on any of our other episodes. Listen to them, download them if you must. But uh, they're really streaming everywhere, uh, anywhere uh, podcasts are are found, such as, but not limited to, Spotify, Audible, Apple Podcasts, Google, Samsung, and uh, did I say Samsung again? You did, Samsung. Goodness! <laughs> Why do I do that? Mushmouth! <laughs> blah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Famfung! And just, you know... Many more. Danger. What the hell? <laughs> but uh, you can find this in uh, in the uh, liquor cabinet section. Yeah, we already talked about the uh, the section of the website called the liquor cabinet. Yes. We also have a section called cocktails. If you've been uh, with us for the last few episodes, you will have noticed that along with our tastings, we always try to conclude include with a cocktail and so we've done the von Payne, the the current old-fashioned right we did the scotch sour mm-hmm. and then we did that uh bow street do we decide it was bow street smash i've been calling it the street okay. like bow, uh, bow, bow street that's bow or bow street bow smash. street smash man that was so good it was good it yeah, was yeah. really good so the cocktail section of the website as i've been adding the actual recipe and kind of a, just a summation and review of what we thought about it with links to uh, what you need, but more specifically the actual recipe right there. So if you want to try this, you've got it right there in front of you. And so either right before or after this episode publishes, you'll find this recipe out there. So Absolutely. You can find that on savertheburn.com. And uh, if you have any feedback, please email uh, savertheburn at info at savertheburn.com. You can email me directly at jonathan at savertheburn.com. And you can email W2 at, you guessed it, W2 at savertheburn.com. You can find us on all socials, specifically on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. I don't think we're on MySpace. Definitely not MySpace. (laughs) I think Tom has left that building. And ladies and gentlemen, this is that time where we all say... Keep on burning. burning. (laughs) See you guys. Later.